All right, boys and girls, we are back for chapters seven and eight of Miss Daisy is Crazy. So in the last couple chapters, they were talking about what they wanted to be when they grew up. And some of you had some great answers for that. Uh, we talked over that for our Zoom meeting. Uh, I know Andrea Young, she wanted to be just like Miss Daisy. And I don't think AJ liked that too much. Um, and he talked about how he wanted to be a football player. And then there was, earlier, it was Miss Daisy talking about the arcades and how they should have more arcades in schools. Um, I don't know where Miss Daisy, Miss Daisy's head's at. And uh, if she's just agreeing with the kids to kind of be friendly with them, if she really believes it, or if she has a trick up her sleeve. So we're going to see what happens in chapters seven and eight. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So chapter seven is called Bonbons and Footballs. Now remember, bonbons are what Miss Daisy likes to eat. It's the little bite-sized like chocolates, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She liked that in the, in the previous chapter. So we'll see. Maybe she brings them in for the class. All right. The next day, Miss Daisy brought in a box with ribbons on it and told us she had a surprise. What's, What's in, in the box? box? We pleaded. It's a secret. Please. Please. Well, okay. She said, opening the box. It's bonbons. Miss Daisy said she thought we might be able to use them for arithmetic problems so we can learn together. She put the bonbons on the table in the front of the room. There must have been 20 or 30 of them. Can somebody think up an arithmetic problem using bonbons? She asked. Andrea? If you had three bonbons in a box, said Andrea, as she put three bonbons into her pencil box, and you had three boxes just like that, how many bonbons would you have all together? Miss Daisy looked at Andrea's pencil box for a long time, counting in her head and on her fingers. Any dummy would know that three boxes with three bonbons in each box would equal nine bonbons. Three times three is nine. But Miss Daisy didn't seem to know that. Finally, she just opened up Andrea's pencil box and popped the three bonbons into her mouth. Who cares how many bonbons I have? She asked. As long as I get to eat some of them. Miss Daisy really needs a lot of help with arithmetic. After she had eaten her bonbons, Miss Daisy passed out bonbons for all of us, and we had a bonbon party. Then she said that was enough arithmetic for the day and asked what we wanted to talk about for the rest of our math time. Football, I shouted. Miss Daisy didn't like that I talked without raising my hand first. Personally, I don't see what raising my hand has to do with talking. I don't talk with my hands. But she did let me talk, and I told her that football is just about my favoriteest thing in the world, and I know all about it. My dad takes me to every game of the Chargers, a professional football team. Maybe you can help me, Miss Daisy said. I always wondered how long is a football field. A hundred yards, I told her. Anybody knows that. Wow, that's a big field. With a field that big, how can you and your father see what's going on? My dad always tries to get us seats near the 50-yard line, I said. They're the best tickets. Why? Miss Daisy asked. Because the 50-yard line is right in the middle of the field. Does that mean that half of 100 yards would be 50 yards? She asked. Yep. I see. Miss Daisy said. So if you know there are 100 yards on a football field, do you know how many pennies there are in a dollar, Andrea? A hundred, hollered Andrea Young. Just like a football field. Really, said Miss Daisy. So if half the football field is 50 yards, how many pennies are in half a dollar? 50, Michael Robinson shouted. Because 50 is half of 100 and 50 plus 50 makes 100. And half of 50 must be 25 because two quarters is 50 cents, added Emily. And four quarters makes a dollar. Ryan exclaimed. And four quarters makes a football game, too, Miss Daisy shouted, jumping up and down with excitement. Wait a minute, I said. I thought you told us we were finished with arithmetic. This wasn't arithmetic, she told us. It was football. Well, okay, I said. Just as long as you weren't trying to sneak arithmetic into our conversation about football. Would I do that? Miss Daisy asked, and then she winked at me. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard to tell if Miss Daisy is serious or not. Chapter 8. A Lot of Books. On Thursday, Principal Klutz came into our class. He was wearing a hat, which almost made him look like a regular person who had hair on his head. I have to go to a meeting, Principal Klutz told us. But I heard that some of you second graders had something important you wanted to discuss with me. Miss Daisy said that I could ask my question. 
can we buy the school? Hmm, Principal Klutz said. Hmm, is what grown-ups say instead of er or um or uh when they don't know what to say. Why do you want to buy the school? Principal Klutz asked. Because we want to turn it into a video game arcade, I told him. Hmm, I see, the principal said. Schools cost a lot of money. How much? I asked. If you tell us how much it costs, we'll raise the money. I'll tell you what, Principal Klutz said. I can't sell you the school, but I can rent it to you for a night. Do you know the difference between buying and renting? Andrea Young got her hand up first, as usual. When you buy a video, you get to keep it forever, she said. If you rent it, you have to return it to the video store in a couple days. That's right, the principal said. Would you be interested in renting the school for a night? How much would that cost? I asked. One million pages, Principal Klutz replied. Huh? If you kids read a million pages in books, you can turn the school into a video game arcade for one night. A million pages? That sounded like a lot of books. How about a thousand pages? I suggested. A million, said Principal Klutz. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Would it be okay if some of the other classes helped us out? Miss Daisy asked. Certainly, Principal Klutz said. The more the merrier. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If the kids in this school read a million pages, I will come to the big video game night dressed in a gorilla suit. You've got a deal, I said, rushing forward to shake Principal Klutz's hand. In my head, I was already hatching a plan. All right, that's the end of chapter eight. We're going to jump in right into chapter nine because it's a short chapter. So we're going to do seven, eight, and nine. So we got three and one. So let's see what this one's all about. Chapter nine is called Put Those Books Away. As soon as I got home from school, I went up to my big sister Amy's room. Amy is in fifth grade, so she knows lots of things. You gotta help me, I said. If the, if the school reads a million pages in books, Principal Klutz will put on a gorilla suit and let us turn the school into a video game arcade. I would do anything to see that, Amy said. Amy knows how to work the computer really well. She helped me make posters that said, let's turn our school into a video game arcade. And let's turn Principal Klutz into a gorilla. We tacked the posters up all over Main Street. Amy sent emails and instant messages to all the kids in the fifth grade. The next morning, we tacked the posters up all over the school. I passed them out to the kids I saw. Mrs. Rupi, the school librarian, said we could put up some posters in the library. Mr. Seiko, the custodian, said we could put some up in the lunchroom in the bathrooms. Ms. Hind, the music teacher, said we could put some up in the music room. By the middle of the day, everyone in the school was reading like crazy. Kids were reading during lunch. Kids were reading during recess. Kids were plowing their way through books and then running to the school library to ask Mrs. Rupi if they could check out more. I read a book about frogs and I don't even care anything about frogs. Some of the teachers were starting to get mad because kids were reading books when they were supposed to be doing other things. Please put those books away, Miss Daisy had to tell us. It's time for reading. Miss Daisy said she was sorry that she wouldn't be able to help us very much because she didn't know how to read. But she was nice enough to draw a big mural in the hallway with a giant thermometer on it. Every time we read a lot of pages, she would make up the temperature line on the thermometer go up. At the top of the thermometer were the words, one million. Soon, kids were bursting into a room and yelling, Mrs. Biggs' class has read another 500 pages. And Miss Hassenfrass says to add another 600 pages. It was fun watching the temperature go up. At the end of the week, our school had read almost a half a million pages. It's a lot of reading. Wow, that is a lot of reading. So I don't know. My question is, do you think as the, th the whole of all the third graders, there's about like 60 of us. Do you think you guys could read a million pages? A lot of reading. And it's, it's so, what did they get? At the end of the week, they read almost half a million pages. Do you think you could do that? at the end of the week. And then your principal could dress up. And then your principal, Mr. Brace, I mean, Mr. Brace has already done enough. He's, he's drank pickle juice. He's got water dumped on his head. And I'm out, now imagine Mr. Bracey, now this isn't too much, but he, he dresses up pretty often. He, dre he dresses up like a cowboy. He's dressed up before, but a gorilla suit, I think would be really interesting. So my TTQA discussion question, I'm gonna have it right up on the video. Do you think that you and your third grade friends 
could reach a million pages so that Mr. Bracey could dress up in a gorilla costume. Yes or no? What do you think? And explain why. Give me some detail there. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.